Hey, it's Jeff Hampton with STR Law Guys again. And today I wanna to talk to you on this video series about limited partnerships. We're gonna kind of really go down into the weeds and talk about the difference between limited partnerships and limited liability companies, which make the most sense, particularly when related to holding companies. And by the way, if you wait around to the end of this video, I'm also gonna give you a free ebook, a case study of a short-term rental investor uh, protection plan. Essentially, I'll give you a case study of someone maybe similar to yourself and what they needed to do in order to get their asset protection plan in order. All right. Now, let's jump right into this. Listen, maybe you just bought your second, maybe your third short term rental. What do you do? Maybe you've put your first one in a limited liability company. You're in an LLC. Maybe you feel like maybe I'll just do it again. Do I just keep adding LLCs for every short term rental that I buy? What is the structure? Does that make sense? Now, listen, it's important that especially as a growing investor, you continue to add assets to your portfolio. It's really important to make sure you consider all asset protection strategies, including all entities that might provide you both both not only the most protection, but also the most flexibility in terms of taxes and other options out there. So one of the things we're gonna look at is limited partnerships. Limited partnerships can be a very effective tool in asset protection. And as mentioned in our discussion with the LLC video, every situation is unique, but normally we tell people, if you buy a short-term rental, you should still put it in an individual LLC. Don't put all your short-term rentals in an LLC. You need to put them, don't group them together. You need to have each short-term rental in its own individual LLC. But what happens if you start really growing your portfolio? What if you start looking at this saying, now I have to file K-1 tax returns for every one of these? I'm spending a ton of money on this. Isn't there an easier way to hold all of these assets together and have a holding company strategy to provide you more flexibility? And the answer to that is yes. There is the concept of a limited partnership. It's been around much longer than the concept of an LLC has. Very settled case law on it. And the basics of a limited partnership go like this. When you have a limited partnership, you have a general partner and you have a limited partner. A general partner is the active partner, the one responsible for managing the business, generally bears the responsibility for the, the uh, actual activities of the business. And then you have the limited partner. The limited partner obviously makes a contribution to that partnership, but they are passive. They are not the active partner and many times do not bear the same responsibilities and liabilities as a general partner does. And we're gonna get into that here in just a minute. But let's talk about this now. We've already talked about how it's a good idea to put your short-term rentals, for the most part, in an in individual LLC. So where does the limited partnership aspect come about? Let's talk about the pros and cons of considering an LLC for your holding company or a limited partnership, an LP, as your holding company. Now, one of the things we look at is, for an example, let's say you own, I'm just going to give you a hypothetical. Let's say you own a short-term rental in Texas. Then you own a short-term rental in Oklahoma. Let's say you also own a short-term rental in Arizona. Now, as it stands right now, is there a way to tie all those together? Can we tie all those together, all together, to find a holding company that provides you an ease of use and makes it uh, more advantageous in terms of your asset protection? The answer to that is, number one, if you try the LLC, there are many people out there that suggest using an LLC as your holding company. And many people advise using maybe even a Wyoming LLC. The problem with that is, I want you to understand, what protection do you get from an LLC? An LLC is only as strong as the charging orders written by your attorney. So what you're relying upon is you're relying on your attorney to hopefully write charging orders that give you that protection. And we're going to talk about the difference between that and an LP, a limited partnership here in a second. But that's number one. That's one of the downsides. You don't know how strong that protection is. But secondly, be careful. If you are going to make an LLC your holding company, you better make sure it's not a disregarded entity. Because if it's a disregarded entity, listen, if, a, if an attacking attorney can go through your bottom, your first LLC, they're going to be able to get into your holding company as well. And so you do not want to have a disregarded entity as your holding company. That's extremely important. And so it's real easy for the law to interpret your LLC as being a disregarded entity, particularly if you're a single member LLC. Now, in contrast, let's talk a little bit about this. Limited partnerships provide asset protection built in because of the statutory protection. So with an LLC, you're hoping your attorney writes it up well, but with a limited partnership, you're not, work, you're not relying on that at all. Instead, you are relying upon the statute itself. The law itself creates this protection. Now, let me explain what I mean. So remember, you've got a general partner and you have a limited partner. The limited partner is always classified non-controlling, non-liable, 
reliable party in the limited partnership. And so you're not having to rely on those charging orders. What we care about is court interpretation. LLCs are widely used and in many different varying forms. And there are so much case law out there where courts and judges just arbitrarily decide to pierce through that LLC. They'll go through there and disregard an LLC. Uh, there's much case law on that. So the LLC doesn't provide as much protection as we would hope it would. Now, additionally, a limited partnership, here's the great thing. A limited partnership can never be treated as a disregarded entity under the law because of the partnership arrangement. So you don't even have to worry about the disregarded entity part. It's a partnership. You've got two classes, general and limited partner. So you don't have to worry about it ever being classified as a disregarded entity. And so let's talk about this now. How? Here's the next question. Number one, we ask, we ask the first question. As a holding company, which makes more sense, an LLC or an LP? We've determined an LP can provide you more protection and flexibility. Number two, how does a limited partnership as a holding company provide you this protection? Well, here's why. Under certain statutes, under certain states that provide you good limited partnership protection, here's how the law works. In the event of a particular, particular crisis event, a predetermined event, a lawsuit, a creditor attack, there is an automatic severance between the general partner and the limited partner. So it, it may, think about how beneficial this is. If you, instead of now having to hope your lawyer wrote it up well enough, now you've got a structure that by operation of law, you can separate the liability of a limited partner and a general partner. Okay, so which is many times much more advisable. So instead of you having to move your, ent your assets from one entity to another, what if you see a lawsuit coming and you decide, oh no, I'm being sued. I'm gonna move my assets from my LLC over to here. Well, under the law, that's called a fraudulent transfer. Okay, and fraudulent transfers can always be disregarded. Courts can go in and take those assets, pull them back, give them to the person who's got a judgment against you or someone attacking your assets. So it's very important. You do not want it to be deemed a fraudulent transfer. And under the Limited Partnership Act, under this, under the example that we're talking about here, that the, the actual statute does it by law. So it's not considered a, a fraudulent transfer, okay? Now also, the Limited Partnership provides asset protection because of the statutory provisions creating that protection. And so one of the things we talk about is is you know as when we when we look into this how do we determine what a general partner is so who's the general partner and who's the limited partner well number one the general partner we like to do it this way and, and most people like privacy they don't want their name on anything okay that's a general rule of asset protection you want to try to keep your name off of any of the assets that you have well as a general rule you can set up a Wyoming LLC as a general partner and you allocate one to two percent ownership interest to that Wyoming LLC here's why as a Wyoming LLC you have privacy your name will not be listed as the general partner. That Wyoming LLC will be. But then we talk about who is the limited partner. The limited partner in the limited partnership is going to be a trust. Whether we talk about a family trust, whether we talk about an asset protection trust, this trust will own 98 to 99% of the ownership interest of that limited partnership. But remember, what happens if you get sued? Let's, let's do a hypothetical, okay? Hypothetical situation. Maybe some type of event takes place at your lake house. You've got a lake house. Maybe an accident happens at the pool. Maybe an accident happens out at the lake on your boat dock. What happens now? A lawsuit in, it begins to take place. And in order to bring this lawsuit, the lawyer will have to sue your lake house LLC to begin with. Once served, what will happen is the lawyer will learn, will learn that the LLC is actually owned by the LP. That's the tie-in, right? The LLC is owned by the LP. And however, what happens? The general partner identity, you, they can't see who it is. They just see that it's a Wyoming LLC. And additionally, the attorney will not be able to identify. Here's the other benefit of a limited partnership. The attorney will not be able to identify the limited partner in the limited partnership. One example of this is the Arizona law, Arizona limited partnerships, uh, partnership statute establishes that the limited partners are always they're always private. So others cannot see who the limited partner is. So if I'm an attacking attorney, I don't see hardly any assets. I see a 1% general partner that doesn't have very much in terms of assets. And now I am less likely to attack that. And even if I do attack it, there's an, a, a severance event that's going to take place between the general partner and the limited partner's liability. So I'm just trying to spell this out for you. Remember, this is done by operation of law, not by hoping your attorney can draft it well enough. 
Okay. Finally, a few additional benefits of limited partnership as a holding company. Number one, limited partnerships are perpetual. That means they last forever. So depending upon the state that you're set up in, you're not having to file a bunch of uh, annual fees, annual reports. There's none of that. That's required many times on an LLC. There's a lot of fees and filing reports that have to take place with an LLC. You do not have any of that when it comes to a limited partnership. Number two, privacy can be established through the properly structured limited partnership statute. And I just gave you that. You have a Wyoming LLC for your general partner, private, no one sees it. You have a, uh, a trust set up as your limited partner, severance, remember under Arizona law, they can't even see who the limited partner is. So you still have that same privacy. And then finally, limited partnerships are easy to maintain. Very, and they're not very costly at all. So there's no tax filing requirements under state law if you have a limited partnership. And the one of the reasons why we like the Arizona limited partnership statute is that there's no tax filing requirements, there's no annual report, there's no filing fees. Here's all you have to do. You go with your accountant, you get with your accountant and you file a single federal form 1065 tax, basically it's a partnership tax form. It simplifies all of it. If you use an LLC as your holding company, you have to file individual K-1s for all of your properties. Listen, I don't know about you, but my accountant charges like $1,000 to $1,500 for every one of those. Those add up if you've got a number of properties. So notice it very much simplifies it from a tax perspective, and it also simplifies things from an asset protection standpoint. So in summary, although look, it may be commonplace for many people to set up an LLC as a holding company, is there a better way? Yes, there is. A limited partnership statute provides you more flexibility and it provides you more protection. Listen, I hope this was helpful. I know this is a complicated subject and I know this is one of those things that's easy to get lost in. But I listen, I, I appreciate you watching this. Go back in and watch some of our other videos as well as we tie it all together. And I wanna thank you for joining us here today. Don't forget your free ebook. Input down your email address and I'll send you over a case study of a short-term rental owner asset protection plan. All right. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.